All right, so this is Astro's Playroom. This is like, um, you buy a PlayStation, you get this to show off the controller. People recommended it and said I should check it out, so... This experience was created to show you some of the cool tricks possible with the DualSense wireless controller. Chat, I can feel the vibration. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So I can't really explain what this feels like necessarily. I, this was explained to me before and I didn't get it until just now. It's really cool, it's magic. Oh, no wonder this controller has the battery life it does. There's a bunch of robots inside of it, causing ruckus. Microphone. Microphone. Yeah, baby! Let's go! The adaptive triggers are cool, though. You can you can feel them. They, they get hard. They stiffen. I don't know how to describe it. Made in dreams. I mean, it reminds me of dreams. Which one is Astro? Oh, that's not the good fan. Those- the good fans are the Noctua ones. Okay. Kinda cool so far. Vinny, are you gonna play the Mayo game? I did in a previous stream, it's terrible. This just reminds me that Nintendo Land is never gonna be on anything but the Wii U. That was another good pack-in tech demo. Because it actually had games that, like, I would play. I ended up playing those with my friends more than I expected to. 1-2 Switch not good enough for you? Uh, I've heard everybody 1-2 Switch is a massive piece of shit. But this has got some decent controls so far. This solid little platformer. Where does Wii Sports stack up? Wii Sports is probably the best one of all time. In terms of, um, the effect it had. Whether or not it's the best, like, in terms of fun, I don't know, I'm not sure. Because I don't really like a lot of the Wii Sports stuff anymore. It was fun for a little while, but it wasn't like I, uh, it wasn't like I played it constantly. Though it was the very, very successful, like, tech demo of, like, oh, this is what the Wii is, this is how it works. Were there any other, like, tech demo games? Because we, you know, there's Nintendo Land, there's Wii Sports, there's this. Connectimals? <laughs> no. It's probably real, I've never heard of it. You know what, I probably have heard of it, and it just left the memory banks. Super Mario World was a pack-in. I would argue that that's a little different. Just because that game is a full-ass game, and it wasn't really designed to show off the Super Nintendo... I mean, maybe it was, but... Oh yeah, Monster Hunter reference. Oh, so there's gonna be references in here and stuff? The Lance, Sword and Shield, Hammer, and the Great Sword. Who's this asshole? Is this game worth $500? I, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Ask again after Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2 comes out, and then I'll let you know if it was worth buying a PlayStation 5 for two games. Yes, there's a few more games than that, some of which aren't on the PC, but this has become a Final Fantasy machine for me. And also maybe shovelware and dreams. So yeah, I mean, I'll try to get my use out of it. Hey, the good news is this, chat. The PS5 came out, what, three years ago, almost? When I got my PS4, it was the end of the PS4's lifespan. When I got my PS3, it was the end of the PS3's lifespan. Is this a reference to that one game, 3D Dot Heroes? Um, oh, Horizon. Can't believe they got Daft Punk to come back together for this game soundtrack. But yeah, this does feel like I'm playing something out of dreams. And this looks like a Mario Odyssey reference. Though it kind of also reminds me of the Mets from, uh, Baseball. No, from Mega Man. Oh, and you have the Flood Hover. Yeah, a little bit. They're from 3D Land, not Odyssey. Oh, okay. My bad. Um, here's a question, just to kind of give me an idea of what I'm playing here. How long is this? Like, a couple hours? A couple hours, but you can go more with gotchas? Look at this insult. We get a Bloodborne reference. Bloodborne never. Though to be fair, I played it so... well, not that recently. Never mind. No, I, I played it before Sekiro came out. Like, I'm not sure I, if, the, if there was a Bloodborne remake, I'm not even sure I would play the whole thing, because I just kind of played it. Um, I don't know what this is a reference to. 
Last of Us? Oh, the mushrooms, right. Right. Okay, I haven't played any of those games. Either of them games. Oh, but make no mistake, I'm fully aware of what the chat would turn into if I were to play them. Even the first one at this point. Like, I'm, I'm aware of that at the very least, and that sounds like a fucking nightmare, so no thank you. But honestly, I know people have recommended them before, or the first one at least. Like, Vinny, you need to play this, you have a PlayStation, you could play this. Even then, I wasn't all that interested. I'm sure it is a wonderful game, but I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm sorry, chat. I, yeah, again, people have recommended it over and over and over again. There are people that really love that series, or at the very least, the first game. But I've also been recommended the Horizon games, God of War. Like, there's a lot of PlayStation series that I just missed out on. Spooderman, Persona. Vinny, play 150 hours of Persona, please. Um, is this Nathaniel Drake? It is. Is this game fucking sponsored by Discord or something? It's like Discord logos everywhere. Well, the controller sure is vibrating. Like, constantly. Like, every movement has an equivalent vibration. It's not really using the, uh, the analog triggers. Funky. Oh, now it's doing them. I get it. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, I have to actually... I get it. I have to be the controller by being the monkey, or opposite that. I heard what sounded like a Red Wing Blackbird. Bird nerd? Not really. Just common, you know, New York birds. You have to jelk the controller. You disgusting, disgusting chat member. Ray Trace ruins. I feel like that's just the... <laughs> the current state of ray tracing in terms of, um... Remember when they remade Quake 2 with ray tracing and it looked like shit? That's just the PR on ray tracing. It's fine. Ray tracing is fine. But then there's so many games that ship, and it's like, turn ray tracing off, it breaks the game. I've seen it look really good, but I've also seen it look really bad. I, don't, I just don't think it's quite there yet. It's only good for specific aesthetics. You can- you have so much control over big lighting, but I, uh, I think that it can look amazing. I get why the tech is impressive, but like, remaking Quake 2 with it, for example, just to me didn't really work out so great. Demon Souls? Okay. What are your thoughts on ray-traced audio for VR? Oh, you mean, like, realistic audio, the way it, like, bounces off of walls and stuff? I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on that. Sounds cool, I guess. Uh... The Order 1776? Oh, okay. I don't even remember that game existing. The name is vaguely familiar. I mean, make no mistake, there's some classic Sony stuff in here, and lots of stuff that I recognize, and stuff that isn't just the PlayStation franchise, of course, but, you know, it's not like, oh, look, there's Metroid from Metroid. That's a little bit more difficult for Sony to pull off. Most of their stuff at this point has been on other consoles. Sorry, Sony. The console wa wars are over, and you know who won? Yeah. The Ouya. Get fucked. Yeah, get yourself some- bu buy some more games, Sony. Why don't you buy Duke Nukem now? Get that Duke Nukem forever. <laughs> okay, so this is cool. The resistance that you get, like, from uh, shooting an arrow is genuinely cool. PC games won as long as their GPU doesn't explode on them. So I kind of shit on the PS5 in regards to why would anyone need this when you have a PC? And the answer is, like, you just don't want to deal with PC stuff. <laughs> really, I mean, it's a powerful console. It's user-friendly. The quality of life stuff is great. It's massive. It's way bigger than I expected. Holy shit. It is a big console. Like, 40%, 30, maybe 30% bigger than the PS4. Um, but I, I get it. And also, for 500 bucks, you can play a lot of shit. A lot of, like, modern stuff. Whereas, it's a little bit different, because a like, PC with a good modern GPU is more expensive. Granted, a decent GPU and a good CPU and the rest of the PC being good is a little cheaper, and stuff will still work. But if, like, if you just don't want to deal with PC stuff or you don't know how to deal with it, I get why, you know, I get why the clear option is to get, like, a PS5 or something. But if you're already, like, if you're like me and you already have a good computer for, uh, you know, gamer shit and for streaming, then, yeah, the only reason to pick up a PS5 is just a couple exclusives. So yes, I understand the utility of getting a PlayStation. It makes a lot of sense for a, a very wide degree of, of people. Oh, Tekken. Desert got his for free? Really? Des, did you- you got a PS5 for free? How'd you- um, how? 
friends. Good for you, man. I mean, I feel lucky I got Final Fantasy 16 for free. That If I didn't, I, this wouldn't be happening right now. That was like the impetus. And again, I've had issues with Square. I've had a lot of issues with Square. And they're ass backwards, like policies and, and like, I've, you know, we got some history. But lately, they've been like, yeah, have our game. Like, yeah, do you want a Final Fantasy Crystal, uh, what is it? Um, not Crystal Chronicles, what am I thinking? Crisis Core. It was like a jacket and like tissue. And then they're just like, do you want this copy of Final Fantasy 16? You don't have to thank Square every 20 minutes. I'm like, yeah, guess I have to fucking buy a PlayStation 5 for it, but sure. And again, chat, no, I'm, I'm doing fine. I have money that I need to pay bills and then some, but I'm also not like, um, Mr. Multimillionaire Streamer Man. It's easy to make assumptions based on maybe other, the way some people are extremely rich in this space, but I, I tend to keep things fairly modest. So while I can afford a PS5 and I'm happy I can do so, and thank you all, by the way, for helping me with that, you know, $500 is not exactly an easy purchase. Like I, I can't just, for anyone, that should be like a little bit of thought process should go into that. So I really had to think about this. I'm like, what other games am I gonna play on this console? And yeah, I mean, there's a potential I would play Spider-Man because New York City, Always a big fan of New York City and video games. Um, but yeah, it's mostly a Final Fantasy machine. I gotta say, I'm not overly interested in God of War. And yes, it looks cool as fuck. It does really look cool, and I'm sure... Oh, this is the, um, PS4 noise. How about Silent Hill? Is Silent Hill only coming to PS5? No. Vinny, if one of the Spider-Man games went on sale, would you try it? If I didn't have a whole lot else to play, sure. Listen, the good news about having a PS5 for streaming, just purely as a streamer, is I now have more options. Journey, maybe. So yeah, if there's future exclusives, if there's like remakes that come out to PS5 first, and then you gotta wait like six months before they hit PC or whatever, I can check them out when I want to. So I'm just trying to justify the purchase here, chat. Just let me have this, thank you. I got that. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> the Bloodborne Machine. No, I got some good games in there. I got the I Am Mayo game. Labo? Might be some infringement going on here. I still think the original PS1 is my favorite console from Sony. And also the way it looks. Not just the games, but the way it looks. I love the PS2 as well, but I like the PS1 a little bit more. That just got more of my favorite games on it. PS1 was groundbreaking, and it, yeah, it was, in, in a lot of ways. I mean, the PS2 was groundbreaking, too. The DVD player was, was huge for that console. The fuck? Everything needs to have a gotcha machine these days? Another PS4? Who wants this one? Oh, it's the PS4 Pro. Hang on. Nice. Nice number you got there. New artifact. Network adapter. PS2 network. <laughs> Why is this in the game? I didn't have one of these. Back in the day, I didn't have one of those. Well, it's nice to have a pack-in game that actually has some substance to it. You know, I think that's... Really, this is about as good as you can get in regards to a pack-in game. So, it's reverential to the history of the front of the console. It shows off the new tech, the new controllers, and has a couple hours of gameplay so you can collect a bunch of shit. Vita. <laughs> Yeah, Vita's a whole different story. I did borrow a PSP for a while. Remember the PSP commercial, Vinny? Oh, I try not to. But bitch. But bitch. But bitch. Very Mario 3D World. Which if you're gonna, you know, reference... If not reference, but like take pointers from a 3D platformer. I'm not saying they did, but if, if you're going to, you should probably take a look at some of the Mario games. Sunshine. I mean, this is a sunshine mechanic. Oh, they did. They did, and that's okay. No, because it's cheating. Speaking of the God of War. But no, I mean, this is really neat. And the controls are good, too, and the camera's not bad. Loco Roco. He wants to hate it, but can't. I Believe it or not, I want to like things. I've had a PlayStation since one, chat member. I have my issues with Sony, and I, I have a little buyer's remorse for the $500 I had to spend because Sony's buying exclusives, uh, but that's just the industry. Nintendo does it too, and fuck them when they do it as well. But uh, no, I, I actually would rather have a good time than a bad time, believe it or not. Let's put it this way, I'd rather not, I would rather have a good time for a competing console than the one that I grew up with, than 
enjoy the hatred of a bad game so that way I could like feel the tasty hate from my uh and schlorp the console company of my choice. I, I genuinely would rather enjoy the games. Like when I got a PS1, I was a little salty because you know, Square was on Nintendo. They made Chrono Trigger, they made Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy, it was all on Nintendo. So I had to get a PlayStation, but then I realized something, the PlayStation was awesome. And the discs allowed you to like have voice acting and like cutscenes, and the controller actually kind of made sense. And I ended up really enjoying the, um, the console quite a bit. No, I love Chrono Cross, chat member. I do, <laughs> I genuinely do. Do you ever like something that you know is a little fucked up? All right, aside from Vine Sauce, aside from me, but really, no, like a game that you're like, yeah, this, this, this game has got some problems, but you still love it. That's me and Chrono Cross. I would prefer a Chrono Cross remake over a Chrono Trigger remake because Chrono Trigger is damn near perfect in my mind. You've heard me say this before, but I'll say it again. Chrono Cross needs help. Trigger is fine. Didn't they just do that? Not really. All they did was um, release a version of it for um, more modern consoles, and it really, really sucked, apparently, on launch. And then they added some patches to uh, improve the frame rates. But I mean, like, an, a complete re- like, a reimagining, not just a remake, like, a reimagining. I think the game would be very, um, ripe- ripened for a full reimagining, because the world is so fucking cool. And, and beautiful. And they could just leave the music alone and it'd be fine. Just have an option for the old music. Like, Trials of Mana did that. Chrono Cross is one of my favorite games I know about it because I saw you streaming it a few years ago, so thank you for that. That is really cool to hear. I'm glad you like it. As flawed as it can be, and as nonsensical as some of the story beats can be. Just have more battle music. Yeah... It's the worst track in the game. Have you checked the Final Fantasy IX Memoria project? I have. Apparently, it's not playable. They might just be saying that to get Square off their case. But for the amount of time that that was worked on, you basically only get the first 45 minutes of the game. So I don't expect them to ever really fully finish it. However, if there was ever a way to fully explore Alexandria in Final Fantasy IX in 3D like that, just Alexandria, I would be totally down for that. Um, I've seen some people say that it... it killed the, uh, the style of the game, and I watched it again, and I thought they did a good job with it. Oh, I have one of these. I, I even used it once, I think. Concrete Genie? Uh, again, never even heard of that. I've heard of Game Genie from Galoob. What was the thing you needed to make for PS Move? Oh, those are the Hitachi PS Ones. Feel the sand. I, uh, it's like little vibrations, yeah. Ducks. Placid Plastic Duck Simulator? Is this you? PS3 tech demo. Oh, I remember that! Chat, look, I'm Mario on Yoshi. So wait, is each area like a reference to, um... Am I... Listen, I'm kind of dumb, so... Each one's a different console. Uh, <laughs> okay. Wow, it took me that long to realize. Uh, I don't know what this is either. Fat Princess. Oh, that I, I've heard of. really trying to get those haptics. I mean, it feels like a spring. It's genuinely impressive. It offers the right amount of resistance and a little bit of vibration, and it feels like a spring. Well, the sound effect helps, too. What the fuck is this? Oh, like resistance fall of man or something, maybe. I like how that actually looks like a carbine of some kind, compared to, like, fappy Nintendo toys. Too bad this is the only game that will ever use the haptics effectively. Well, I don't know. Remember the Wii U? Think of all the games that use that gimmick. Now, this is at least subtle enough that it's not gonna ruin games, like, I can think of a couple games that the Wii U thing, forcing it in there, didn't really help at all. Zombie U was a genuinely cool game that could have been even better, with just a couple additional things, but it, it, it was a good way to um, show off some of the tech on the Wii U. Like, that game is, like, kind of forgotten, but it was a decent, it was a decent launch game. Colonel, this is Solid Snake. It's at the point now where people are asking David at panels across various conventions he goes to, Um, do you know that Vinny guy? And he has to, like, pretend he likes me. No, he's, he's cool. We had a really... We had a good conversation, but I mean... Chat, don't ask him about me. You know there's at least 35 more interesting questions that you could ask him. Like, what? I don't know. Like, what he ate for breakfast? That's at least more interesting than... What did you think of Vinny when you met him? Or 
Are you aware of Vinny who made you say squeeze your hog? Which I never made him do that. <laughs> Not that that's a question he gets, but I'm just saying. I mean, he does have a good sense of humor, so that's good at least. Bot charted. Vinny, what are your thoughts on thoughts? Sometimes I wish I didn't think. Does that help? You know that moment, and I think you should leave from last season, where he's wearing the bizarre old man outfit? And he's like, I don't even want to be here anymore. I was watching some of the new Eric Andre episodes. I mean, it's still funny. I, I mean, Hannibal's not there anymore, but it's still a funny show. Uh, but it's funny in a way that I don't laugh out loud. I just kind of look at it like, like, how how did he come up with all this and then actually pull it off? Like, is this guy sick or is, is he okay? Oh, oh my yeah. Oh, oh, shit. And I can only watch like two episodes in a row. Any more than that, and I think I just suffer brain damage. So I, I need to like kind of space out my Eric Andre consumption. <sighs> gimmick. Only Nintendo use gimmick. Is this infamous? What is this? Resident Evil? Oh, yeah. Wait, why is Resident Evil 1 in the PS3 section? It's just random references. Oh, I thought the references were segmented to their respective consoles. I get a lot of little Big Planet um, nostalgia when I play this. So yeah, it reminds me of Little Big Planet in Dreams, as well as some of the platformers from like Nintendo. Big Little Big Planet fan. But what is going on with that one robot on the table? Is he humping that popcorn? A UMD. Vato Rocco. Please play UMD. We're at the point now where anything with three letters is a please play. Thank you, chat. Harpa. Harpa the Rarpa. Oh yeah, look, those are the icons. How about that? Yeah, I'm sorry to say this, chat, but the, I don't really have a lot of nostalgia for the PS3. I had it for a few games. I enjoyed those games. It was fine. MGS4 machine? Yeah, MGS4 was one of them. Um, 3D Dot Heroes. I mean, I missed the- I didn't play like Uncharted. I know I missed a lot of big games on the console. But I got it so late in the console's lifespan. What else do I have? Um, what the fuck is Kung Fu Rider? Little Big Planet 2. Uh, Dead Space, Metal Gear Solid 4. A bunch of games that I have that I don't know why I have. I guess someone gave them to me at a convention or something. I got, like, Alice Madness Returns. Um, I've got Kung Fu Rider, iPad. I do have an Uncharted game. Um, Metal Gear Solid Collection, HD Collection. There were a lot of games I downloaded, too, on the PS3. Yeah, Red Dead Redemption. Wait, I, I played that on Xbox, I think. I did, I played that on Xbox. Because I had an Xbox 360 from nearly the beginning. The reason I ended up going with Xbox that console generation is because that's the one my friends were playing. So, like, if everyone's playing their Call of Duties and GTAs and Gears of War on their Xbox, you know, I didn't want to be left out. Is this, like, a slim edition? Because mine doesn't have rounded corners like that. PSP Go. No UMD. Oh my god. This looks cool. It wasn't. It hurt my hands. Vinny, please play OMG. <laughs> Vinny, it fucked my wife's wife. Oh, that, that's a shame. Okay, now I really want to see the PS1. It's almost Pachelbel's cannon, but it deviates just in time. Flower? It's just called Flower? If you want to take a trip down PlayStation Nostalgia Lane chat, I can read... Um, Wait, are my PS1 games? No, I don't have those nearby. Those are in a box. I can read, I swear. I can read my PS2 games, I still have those. Those are in a, uh, a place nearby. PS1 games that I had, I sold some of them, but um, it's like Medal of Honor, Final Fantasy, seven through nine, Rogue Trip, remember that? It's like a Twisted Metal type game from the people who made the first Twisted Metal. Medieval, I didn't have that. Is that what that's a reference to? Chrono Cross, um, Symphony of the Night, Metal Gear Solid, obviously, VR missions as well. There's a Symphony of the Night reference in this that you missed. I missed it? Aw, oh, man. What else did I have? Um, oh, man. I know there were a lot more, and I just can't think of what they were. Here it is. The original. 
No, I didn't have Siphon Filter. I had, like, demo discs, so I played, like, all of them. At least a little bit, but I didn't actually, um... I didn't own Croc or Siphon Filter. There it is. There's the best game. Norman Breedus and the Streetus Deletus. Someone said, thank God Vinny didn't Death Stranding Final Fantasy 16. Final Fantasy 16 is, is a little different because I had interest in that because it's Final Fantasy. I had interest in the story and the first two hours, my first play session, they, it, it won me over in, in those two hours. I was like, okay, I'm invested. This is cool. It was just a personal preference thing. I, it just clicked, whereas uh, Death Stranding didn't. Yeah, after like five or six hours. Also completely different games. Yeah, the genres are totally different. Gameplay is totally different. My expectations of what the games would be was totally different. But at no point did someone eat a maggot in the first hour, half hour of the game. And I was just like, what, what am I doing with my life? Like, I didn't have that moment. Now, I admit that's a me problem. I'm sure some of you watched the maggot eating scene and were like, whoa, this is sick. But I, I was, for some reason, I just did not just did not want to have anything to do with that thing. You've done Sunday stream games that have done worse things. I know, but those games were only- I could only play them for 10 minutes, and then I could move on. Well, I was gonna try to go through there, but I'd rather rush through the levels. I'm just developing my speedrunning techniques, chat. <laughs> I think my speedrun probably is ruined by now. That would be my guess. Heavy rain? Jason! Sean! Press X to Jason. <laughs> I know I'm missing, like, a good chunk of my PS1 library, too. I can't remember the rest. I'd have to, uh, dig up the box where they are currently located. Oh, Tony Hawk. It's also Tony Hawk, of course. Yeah, motherfucker, yeah. Yeah, motherfucker, yeah. Oh. Okay, um, Monkey Ball, you want to talk about some dedication, but also Mario Galaxy. Except instead of rotating the whole controller, you're just using the touchpad, which is a nice, a nice thing, because I, I would rather play this like that marble game in the arcade, and this kind of simulates that. Chat, I thought that this console was a myth for two years. I had never seen one in person, I had never played a game on it, everywhere was sold out of one. Like, I actually thought PS5 was, like, some kind of jape. Like, people were making it up. Is that what I think it is? It was just a mass hallucination, the PS5. Like, I think people had to... Like, Sony had to actually go and make one. Because at that point, it was... There was rumors that it was real. So they were like, alright, let's do it. What do you think the next Sony console is gonna be, chat? Do you think any of the other consoles are jealous that Sony gets to just keep keep using PlayStation? Because they did it first. It's both incredibly lazy and incredibly brilliant. Because the PlayStation brand is so incredibly strong for people. Like, all they have to do is hear, Oh, did you get the new PlayStation? It's fine. It's fine. Fallout! Someone said, I lost track of Xbox names. I still don't fully know what we're up to with Xbox. Like, is it Series X or Series S? Which is the new one? They just call it Xbox. Yeah, but it gets confusing because apparently both Series S and X are a thing. So it's like, did you get the new Xbox? It's like, well, which one? The cheaper one. I don't know. Meanwhile, PlayStation is like, hello, we are PlayStation 5. Next will be PlayStation 6. Thank you. Ace Combat. Meanwhile, Nintendo is naming their shit after cocks and, like, sex positions. I was like, okay, Nintendo. Super Nintendo. And then, like, we, we thought it was gonna be Ultra Nintendo or something. Like, Ultra 64. Oh, uh, Sekiro, maybe? Or, or which one is this? Ghosts of Tsushima. Okay. And it was going to be called Ultra 64 at one point. And then they got rid of the Ultra. Because it's like, okay, what do you do after Super? Ultra. And then after that, what do you do? Because it's gonna get ridiculous real quick. Mega. Giga. Nintendo. Stupendous Nintendo. No, Cube! Now we name this console Cube! Look at the shape, it got handle! Miyamoto Nobunga was like, we should give this thing a handle. I love this duck. Thank you, duck. One of the prevailing things was that Nintendo 128 would be the next one. Just like Mario 128. It's like, no, it's the bits. Bits. And then they were just like, nah, fuck it, GameCube. And then Wii. What? Wii. 
infamous, right? You want to hear a worse console name in the Wii? Wii U. I get the impetus behind calling it a Wii, and it worked to a degree because everyone could pronounce it. It's the Nintendo Wii. It was really dumb and really funny for a little while, and then it was just normal life. You just get so used to a name, it just becomes... When I hear Wii now, I immediately think of the shape of the console. Ah, shit. And or the controller. So it's not as silly as it used to be. The Switch also sounded very stupid, now it's normal. I agree. But I will say at least the Switch is a real word, and not W-I-I. And it describes what it does. What's, what's, uh, what's this? Siren? Okay. But yeah, Sony is just like, they got it easy. They can just go PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4, PS5, PS6. Until they get to the orb, the PS9. Then they have to figure out how to make an orb. Meanwhile, here I am trying to... Like, is the Switch 2 a good name? Switch Plus? No, because then that sounds like an enhanced edition. The Switcher? The Super Switch. Oh, uh, don't call it the new Switch. What? Oh god, Nintendo better not call it the new Switch. It seems like they've moved away from that naming scheme. The Switcheroo? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was the, like, open button on the PS1. That's, that's neat. Oh, yeah. Fuck, the Kool-Aid Man wrote this song. Do you think Sony is ever going to attempt a handheld again? Or, here's a, here's a better question. Do you think, at some point, having a hybrid handheld slash console is going to become the norm? What about when technology gets so good that you can have, like, really, really incredibly good visuals, like, in a package the size of your phone? I think we're getting there. It's just a phone. Oh. Watch Oppenheimer on it. No, Stanley Tubrick. Watch his movies on, on your phone. Oh my fucking god. Boy, if I didn't have to control this with the touch thing for precision's sake, I might be able to get it, but I, I'm just gonna give up now. It's fun to control it like this, but I am fucking terrible at it. Oh no! Fallout! Big in Japan. Good timing on the music. I'm sorry, but Sony has not topped that. As an intro sound. PS2 is pretty good too. Sure. It's pretty good. But this, it builds mystique. It, 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 it builds intrigue. It, it's... It's just perfect. It's deep. Powerful. Ah, uh, it's the fucking... When you go into the CD player in the PS1, that color, like, splash thing is what it looked like. And the, the balls, too, in the background there. The orbs. Ah. Yeah, I never had that portable screen. I always wanted one, though. Sackboy. Why is he being dissected like an alien? Oh, I forgot this existed. Yeah. Sure are lots of smaller versions of these things, man. Okay, maybe it can. <laughs> what? I didn't even know this existed. This is cool. I want to play more of it. We could do more, uh, gotchas. But yeah, this is an amazing tech demo. I get why people wanted me to play this. Really solid platforming, creative environments, um, you know, references. And also, it's really good to show off the technology of the controller. The controller is not, like, particularly revolutionary. The HD rumble stuff, I mean, you know, the Switch has that. It feels good on this controller. Uh, the controller is has got a good, like, girth to it. The um, haptics on the R2 and L2 buttons are nice. I don't think they're game changers, but it's cool, I guess. Again, you're gonna hear me complain about the battery life one more time, and I'm gonna say that as much as I love this controller, I would trade the haptics for another 10 hours of battery life or whatever. My favorite controller? Um, maybe the GameCube controller, but that, that controller, it's a nostalgia pick. I think to me the Switch Pro controller is exactly what I want in a controller. Um, this, this is pretty, 
This is like up there in terms of what I like from a controller. I just prefer the analog stick to be in the top left. But yeah, if you want like a nostalgia pick, it's probably Super Nintendo. That's the controller I probably spent the most amount of time with in my life. Switch Pro is perfect except the dog shit D-pad. So here's a true story. I had Grant, a friend of mine and a friend of the stream, uh, fix the D-pad on my Pro controller back in the day because it was real dumb. And then it was perfect. But I think when I bought my second Pro controller, the, uh, the D-pad was like better out the gate. So they might have fixed it a little bit. X-Bone controller. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good controllers out there. I think we've kind of figured it out. Like, the, gone are the days of the N64 controller, and gone are the days of, um, like, the Ouya, <laughs> which just looked uncomfortable. Or how about the original Xbox controller? How fucking massive that thing was. Also, using wands. Like, the Switch kind of still has that with the Joy-Con, because, like, Skyward Sword, you can still play as if it were a Wii. Kinda. I think most people realize that just a solid controller that has all the usual stuff that we're all used to is good enough. And as long as the controller is like durable and solid and the games are good, people will be happy. That said, I don't mind a little bit of motion control, especially gyro. Um, this is the PS2 themed area. Well, I say themed, it's not like you know, overtly PS2, but um, you unlock PS2s and PS2 accessories. Oh, 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 oh. Let me just use a send real quick to get up here. Um, I don't know what game this is supposed to be. Gravity Rush? Oh, okay. Gyro. I can't believe the robot is dead. So yeah, chat Gex. Gex is going to be happening. I feel like there were more... Oh, the Wonka trailer. I wanted to mention the Wonka trailer because Timothy Chalamet has been getting, like, trashed because of his, um, his performance. And, uh, yeah, it's not good. But, uh, okay. I, I, listen, I like Timothy Chalamet in Dune quite a bit. I've seen him in a couple other things. He's good in Interstellar. It is so weird. He's doing like the Johnny Depp Wonka. Not really, but he's kind of like channeling like some of that energy, which is please stop. God, please stop. But yeah, I mean, the movie is not going to be anything more than a farcical attempt to recapture the magic of the, of the first movie. Oh, look at that. Well, that's a pretty intense reference. That can only be one thing. Clud Sword. The Proud Clod. He is 100% doing Gene Wilder, but failing at it. Oh, okay. I mean, if that was... I can see what you mean. I feel like what he's doing ends up looking more like the Johnny Depp Wonka. Someone said his inability to be whimsical or like, what was it? I don't know. Like, there's something like somewhat deranged about Willy Wonka. Like, the movie's kind of dark. There's moments of, of the uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie that's a little dark. And that's what made me love it and still holds up as an adult, mostly. But um, yeah, this it's unfortunate because Timothy Chalamet has Dune coming out and then uh, Willy Wonka not long after that. And to say that those are completely different characters would be an understatement. But I mean, that's good. You want to show your range as an actor in this in the business, right? But I don't know if he was the best choice for that role. I don't I don't know why they chose Timmy. Not that I'm some kind of expert, but man, that's that was a rough trailer. The Dune trailer, on the other hand, looks awesome. I was a pyramid head. The chocolate must flow. <laughs> I watched Asteroid City, is that the name of it? And uh, I don't know how I feel about it because I, I started really disliking it because I'm just like, all right, I think I'm over the Wes Anderson thing. Like I'm really just getting sick of this style. But then the movie became kind of David Lynchy, and I noticed that I got really into it. And I started thinking to myself, okay, like I agree that the Wes Anderson thing is becoming pretty predictable but it's a style, at least it's something. And, I, and he was doing some different things in this movie. The cast was great. It's a really fucking weird movie, and there's a couple scenes that really stuck with me. But I have to be honest, if there's subtext in that movie, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of it, I need to watch it like two more times to get it, because it, it went totally over my head. There's more subtext than text. It seems like maybe uh, <laughs> you're onto something there, but I liked it. By the end of it, I liked it. And it got real creepy and like real weird and like it broke several fourth walls in, a, in, a, in an interesting way, in a surprisingly interesting way. That's a good controller. 
So, no, I, I need to watch it again, so I don't really fully know how I feel, but I still think Darjeeling Limited is my favorite Wes Anderson, because it is generally pretty grounded compared to his later stuff, and I like the music and in, in India portrayed in the movie. It's just great. But um, this one I like way better than French Dispatch, not as much as Grand Budapest. It might end up being one of my favorite Wes Andersons if I watch it like two or three more times, but I don't know if I'm going to do that. And I have to really try to figure out what he's trying to say with it, but I appreciate how weird it is. And there's a really good alien in the movie. I don't, that's not a spoiler, but it's a it really, really good alien. Someone said, Vinny, do you have any big plans for Halloween? Um, Dead Space Remake, Amnesia, the new one, and uh, whatever random horror stuff. I already have a collection of some horror stuff for sure, but it's kind of just, um, as it comes in, I make note of it, and then we do horror stuff. But those are the main ones, yeah, those, those are the two main ones. And if we have time for anything else, I will consider doing other things too. So, chat. Can you hear it? The haptics? All Grimace all month. <laughs> World of Horror gets a 1.0 release. It's a safe bet we'll do World of Horror every Halloween. So it's, it'll be nice to have new um, content. Also, there's a physical release for World of Horror that looks pretty nice. I'm very, um, very big fan of World of Horror. Vib Ribbon? Is that is that a Vib Ribbon, Ribbon reference? No shit! It's amazing how many of the games I don't get the references to, like the big games. And then you show me a Vib Ribbon reference, and I'm like, that's the best thing ever. I'm like, is that God of War? Which guy is that? Kratos? It's Kremrold. Turns out it was Kremrold the whole time. Multi-tap for PS2. I didn't have one of these. I forgot to mention my PS2 library last time I played this, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, because I can see them. Alright, here's my PS2 library. Dirge of Cerberus. This is in no particular order. Dirge of Cerberus, Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> time Splitters, 1. Champions of Norath, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 1, Soul Calibur 3, Guitar Hero, Burnout 3, Takedowns, that game is fucking sick. Sly Cooper, first one. Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, Dark Cloud 2, which by the way, one of the best most underrated games I think. GTA 3 of course, Castlevania Lament of Innocence, Final Fantasy X, Jam Pack, uh, Twisted Metal Black, Devil May Cry 3, and Rogue Galaxy, which I've never played, but I have it. I've played other PS2 games since these games, um, emulated, of course. And I did, uh, have a couple other games that I sold. I don't remember what they were. Which Jam Pack is it? I have, um, Jam Pack Volume 13 with Shadow of the Colossus, Sly 3, Jack X Combat Racing, Ratchet, Deadlock, Soul Calibur 3, Burnout Revenge, Chronicles of Narnia, Genji, Dawn of the Samurai, Giant Enemy Crab, Castlevania Curse of Darkness, Brothers in Arms, Earned in Blood. So, anyway, sorry for the gaming interruption. I just forgot to mention that last time and I wanted to. Like, I played Curse of Darkness emulated, and I played, um, you know, uh, Vice City was my broken game, unfortunately. It didn't, it didn't quite work. And The Sims I had for it as well, and that also did not work. I was broken. But yeah, Dark Cloud 2 is, if it wasn't such a long game, I would consider doing another stream of it. But that game is long, and as much as I love it, it is grindy. But it, it is maybe one of my favorite games. Like, it's it's in my top 100. I don't know where I put it on my list when I made my bullshit arbitrary list, but it's it's somewhere in there. It's, it's phenomenal. That's neat. Um, it would be fun to see you play a, sh a Sims game. Yeah, I wanted to check out a Sims game, and I might still do that, and not do like a big thing like Joel does, but just to check it out, because I've never really played a Sims game in any detail. I don't know which one to play. I don't know which mods to play. I don't know where to begin. I don't know how to make it a good stream. Um, I see people say, yeah, do Sims 2. Joel and I talked about it a little bit, and he recommended, like, do, I think he said do Sims 2, and um, again, it wouldn't be like a big Tamadachi thing, nor would it be anywhere near like Meme House, but it might be fun to just see, oh, Vinny plays Sims for the first time. I had plenty of these. Well, two of them. I guess that's plenty. Plenty in terms of you don't need more than, usually don't need more than two. Okay, you might need more than two. Make your own Meme House, please. I like how we went from, I may check out The Sims, but not do a meme house, to Vinny, make your own meme house. <laughs> God damn it. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna go hard with it if I ever play it, but I will have fun with it in my limited capacity. And, uh, I'm more of a 
SimCity person anyway. Well, not the more recent one, but I can't wait for City Skyline too. Unironically, I'm excited for the CDI game. Me too. I'm very excited for the fake CDI game. Did I miss something? Too so late now. I'm sure I've missed several things by now. DMC2. This is DMC2 because he shoot. He does not use sword. This shoot is best in game. Don't has a cool jacket and he shoot. Oh, he does use sword. No, it's DMC3. Like a PS Move controller. Oh, hi Mario Galaxy. Mario invented space. That's right. Mario also invented blumpkins. That's what you had to step on in, in Mario. The Blumpkins. Listen, for real though, if you told me that a Blumpkin was a Mario enemy, and I didn't know what the word meant, I would probably believe that. I like the, like, graphics on this. It looks like the, um, the stuff that NASA uses, like, on shuttles and stuff. Space material. It's a robot cow. It says, I love milk. Then nobody has a PS5. Normally, I would make- I would laugh about that, but isn't it, like, up to 50 or 60 million units sold? It's like 40 million? 41 million? That's cool, but I find it interesting how 22 million of those sales are all scalpers. It's just <laughs> sitting in, like, storerooms and basements. And, like, it's all dudes with, like, Yankee hats. So, like, it's like eight PS5s in a basement, and then just a wall of Yankee hats. 50% are also FIFA machines. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Well, chat, I'll be the first to say it. As a system, even though this thing takes up a lot of room, I do like the PS5. I am not overly dissatisfied with the console, and uh, I'm sure there are a lot of great games on it, like God of War, that I'm not interested in, and the Spider-Man and all that fun stuff. My experience with it has been good in just in terms of UI and, like, quality of life and good controller, so I guess that's nice. <laughs> Those are nice things. He's now a PlayStation shill. Uh-oh. I've been called many things in my life. Some fair, some unfair, but I've never been called a PlayStation shill. Well, my R1 button is broken. Hey, I know. I'll just switch controllers every time I need to use a different button. Sony... Sony PlayStation makes good product. Oh, that's how you do that. It's fun to shoot. The, uh, eye toy keeps your granny entertained. <laughs> well, at least they're honest. Technically, I shill for bad movies and games more than good stuff. Technically. Because I've told people about The Room so many times, and so many of my highlights are actually bad games. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, I described The Room to my wife as life-changingly bad. Yeah. Well, you know whose life it changed. Tommy Wiseau and Greg Sestero, for sure. The problem I have with The Room is that it made every other bad movie worse. And not in an entertaining way. Like, I love Troll 2, I still think that Troll 2 is, is a really entertaining bad movie. And I can watch that once a year, no problem. But The Room is on a different level of entertainment. Even Neil Breen. Neil Breen might be the exception. But even... Even Neil Breen doesn't quite hit The Room levels for me. There's just something that that movie does that's just on a different level. And I love Neil Breen movies. The thing I have- okay, the problem I have with some Neil Breen movies is there are moments where it is, like, shockingly and incredibly boring. Some of his movies have better pacing than others in terms of just, like, horrendous stuff, but The Room is, like, perfectly paced of- there is something that makes no sense every couple- Every couple seconds, honestly. Like, at, at least every, like, 10, 15 seconds, there's something that it makes no sense. Whether it be bad ADR, which is, like, voiceover. Um... What's this? Rezogun? What's your opinion on Samurai Cop 2 and other movies where they try to make the room? Usually bad. I've never seen Samurai Cop 2. Like, when you cast a porn star in your movie because you're trying to recapture bad movie magic, it's just not gonna work. Like, that can only be done by someone who doesn't realize that his movie is bad. You can loop back around to, like, you're a smart filmmaker and you're making something schlocky, but in order to make a The Room or a pass-through or double-down, like a Neil Breen movie, you, I think you kind of have to be naive to what you're making. When Tommy became self-aware, his stuff became less funny. I would say not just less funny, but horrifically unfunny. Because then he leaned into comedy and, um... 
he did something called The Neighbors, and it's really, really, really painful. Like, the audio's terrible. It's just Tommy acting crazy all the time! And there's not really a whole lot of entertainment to be had, in my opinion. Maybe some of you feel differently, but I really tried. But he was trying to make, like, a wacky sitcom, like, comedy. Because people were laughing at his movie, and he was like, People have a good time, but maybe I make comedy because I am comedy master. Have you watched Fateful Findings? That's 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 the one that I think is probably the best Neil Breen. That one I've seen a couple times. That that's uh that's unbelievably bad. Did you see the FTC thing with Blizzard and Microsoft? Yeah, I there is someone that was like, no matter what it is, buyouts are just bad for the industry because they lead to more exclusives and, and segmenting further. And uh, I think I just agree with that as a blanket statement. I don't fully understand the situation, so I'm not really qualified to talk on it. I don't know how it's going to help the industry, even though Phil Spencer made a big tweet thread about how it will. But I know one thing from watching the VR market pulp itself into oblivion because it wasn't getting good, um, it was getting too segmented. Someone said, to be frank, Blizzard can't get any worse. Well, you hope that Microsoft can run it better, but, you know, if not Phil Spencer, then who's in charge next? You know, and it's still Microsoft, so I don't, I don't really know if I have any faith. Sure, it couldn't maybe get worse, but we'll see. Oh, this is the, the smaller PS2. I didn't have this. This is nice, though. I like the way this looks. Again, PS1. I still like the PS1 and its iterations the best, just in terms of the way it looks. I had PS1 and PS2, and uh, of the- fuck! Of the two, my favorite was PS1. It just had games I liked better. PS2, I, like, I liked the games that I had, I read them off, there's all good games in there. But I think for me it's the RPGs on the PS1 and Metal Gear Solid 1. Oh, that's another thing too, for PS2, I have MGS2, I don't know why I didn't mention it. It's not up in my collection, I don't know why. It's somewhere, I don't think I sold that. And MGS3 I didn't actually own. That I played many years later on, like, Xbox. PS2 is backward compatible. Well, I'm just talking about, yes, the backwards compatibility means the PS2 wins, for sure. But if we're talking about the libraries of the games when they came out, and, like, my nostalgia and my, my opinion on which one I liked more, the PS1 was just a, an amazing time for video games. Like, obviously the N64 had Zeldas and stuff, and, and Goldeneye and Mario, and I loved all that. But the PS1 ended up getting the sequels to some of my favorite games. But yeah, man, the PS1 had fucking Metal Gear Solid 1, had all the Final Fantasy games, Tony Hawk 2, Bubsy. Oh wait, no, not Bubsy. And really, it's the Final Fantasy games and like Chrono Cross that kind of pushed me over the edge with the PS1. Symphony of the Night, yeah. Symphony of the Night's better than anything Castlevania that came out on the PS2. This is cool. Lot of war. It's like a rainbow road, but it's quite it's quite different. That'll hit you right, right in that nostalgia hole right there. Vinny, which are you seeing in theaters, Barbie or Oppenheimer? I can, I can do both. I'm, a, I'm an adult. I'm seeing Oppenheimer in um, IMAX, and then I'm, I'll see Barbo movie at some point after that, I'm sure. Unless they both suck, in which case I'll just eat shit, I don't know. Would you play Pikmin instead? I'm gonna have to play Pikmin the day after it comes out. Uh-oh. Are they gonna do another Astro's Playroom and then just have the PS5 be in there? Like, when PS6 uh, comes out. I love gotcha games! More gotchas! More! GPS? Oh, it's a PSP thing? Huh. It's funny to think that these things were just not a part of the devices. Now we have all of that in a phone. And like, you needed to buy a camera. Crazy. GPS was used for Metal Gear Peace Walker. Which one did I play? Yeah, I played Peace Walker, right? I liked Peace Walker quite a bit. Huh. I remember that. You could do that. Someone said there is so much noise in this game, holy shit. It kinda is a little bit relentless, isn't it? It's like... An infinitely positive atmosphere. 
I mean, I like it, but yeah, I agree with that. Oh, you can dance. Oh, God. Is the Carlton dance? I, I think there's something wrong with me, chat. I mean, I, you know, aside from all the things that are wrong with me, but I get irrationally, like, angry when I see this series of movement from limbs, from human limbs at this point. I, I don't know if it's because of the implication, societal implications of it, or because of the, just the way the limbs move. I don't have, I don't have a good reason. Maybe it's Ninja on New Year's Eve that one year. I'm not seeing enough movement. Maybe that was enough to do it for me. Maybe because when that thing first got, got into a big dance, I remember going to a diner and seeing children flossing in the middle of the aisle. And like, you know, it didn't like annoy me or anything. I had nothing to do with me. But I just remember seeing it and thinking to myself, why are they having fun? I don't like fun. I had fun one time and I stopped that years ago. Wait, chat, what, what's the, um, what's the boss? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying enough attention. Oh, okay, okay, I, I guess I just... Yeah. The year is 1994. Nintendo committed the ultimate act of disrespect against Sony and partnered with Philips so they could create... Excuse me, pro oh, wait, wait, great, I'll grab my stuff! Which is timely, considering what was announced today. Okay, that was earlier than this. Ken... Energy. Ryan Gosling's brain is fucking broken, by the way. I think that that role really screwed him up. Like, he keeps talking about how scientists don't understand what Kenergy is, and it's like a burrito that hasn't been microwaved properly or something. Like, the dude is off the fucking rails. I would say I'm worried about him, but... I mean, at least he seems like he's having a good time. Literally just advertising. Wait. I thought he was a relatable friend. Doesn't drop the bit until the Blu-ray commentary. No, but for real though, Ryan Gosling is really good when it comes to comedy. I, I like him in The Nice Guys quite a bit. Oh my god. I remember seeing this tech demo in videos about the PS1. I like the, the jitter and the low poly. When I see this dinosaur, my mind goes to the Parasite Eve fight. Maybe because I just played it. It's not over yet, Snake. Guaranteed. There you go, grab the tongue! Grab it! Man, the amount of times I've had to pull a tongue in a video game... <sighs> well, it's not the most, like, lengthy experience, but... Again, for a pack-in game, and for, like, a, a little demo and... I thought it said Miyamoto. What is Miyamoto doing doing here? Um, for a pack-in game, it's great. And for PlayStation nostalgia, it's great. It, it really is phenomenal. Like, the type of game that this is, I wasn't expecting, like, to even get two streams out of it. It's just a really quality experience. I could see Astro coming back to the PS5 in, like, a bigger adventure. Like I said, Nintendo Land was also pretty cool. But for everything it did, those things just never came back. It was like, here's all the things the system can do, and here's maybe the first and last time you might see them. That said, though, I'm sure the, uh, the gimmick of the fucking adaptive triggers or whatever, um, isn't used, like, a whole lot, aside from, yeah, you, it, you can make guns feel cool. That's fine. I'm just happy the controller feels good. Like, I don't need too much stuff. Gyro aim? Great. You got solid controls, you got a solid controller that works and doesn't break upon playing it for the first time. 
even better. I fucking, I broke two PS4 controllers and I, I don't know how. One just broke, <laughs> like it just broke. And then the other one, I dropped it maybe three feet one time. And then the fucking thing just stopped working forever. So I don't, I don't know, man. I'm still, I'm still salty about that controller. I mention it, I mention it more than I should. But yeah, um, it was nice. I guess we're done with the PS5 now. We got the PS5's credits and well, it's over. This will be my Final Fantasy machine. Th th when you think about it though, chat, this is Final Fantasy machine part two. Um, Final Fantasy machine part one was PS1. <laughs> Pulse 3 wireless headset. Is this now advertising new product? The, literally the easiest platforming thing I had to do all game and I, I screwed it up. I'm guessing this is gonna be all PS5 stuff. Clamora. I'm sure um, this game sold a lot of product. It is, like, kind of weird, isn't it? Like, they kind of had a thing going for, for years. And then this one, they're just like, nah, it's different. It's the same, but it looks a little different. How does it feel different than PS4? Um, yeah, the PS4 one reminds me more of the DualShock. Its uh, handles, or grips, are a little bit more rounded. Other than that, mostly just aesthetic choices. They feel very, very, very similar. Like, down to the uh, dog nose esque texture on the thumb pads. Yeah, mostly aesthetic, aside from like the adaptive triggers and maybe, I don't know, it feels a little bulkier to hold slightly. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain. They look different, that's clear. Do you remember the E3 presentation of the PS3 controller? It was a silver boomerang. Oh, yeah. Mine is laying horizontal, so it's like this. It comes with a, a little piece that you add to it. it. It doesn't look great, I gotta be honest. It does not look that great horizontal. Honestly, I kind of think this console is a little ugly. Uh, maybe some of you would disagree. I, I think it's kind of ugly. I don't, I don't really like the design of it. I mean, it's fine. It's not like the worst looking console I've ever seen, but uh, I don't know. I don't really know what the, the controller I love. The controller looks awesome. The console itself, I'm not crazy about. But yeah, that boomerang controller was pretty embarrassing. I remember that becoming like a meme and it looked like really painfully un uncomfortable. But that's when they were like, hey, we're gonna do DualShock again. Let's take a look at the controllers. Let's, let's look. Oh, uh, I don't have the controller for the PS4. I don't have that unlocked, but PS1. Then there was the DualShock, which is just PS1 with the analog and then DualShock 2 is very, very similar, with some other little tech in there, too. Then you have... Yeah, PS3 is just... I mean, they were like, alright, Boomerang didn't work, what do we got, what do we got? We've got the old one. Alright, do the old one. Do it. And now, looking at the PS4 one, it is a little bit more... Like, I have it in my hand right now, and yeah, there's, there's like a... A sleeker thing going on here, like, it's, it's more, uh, sensual. Especially where the... L and R buttons jut out. This uh, this has a little bit more um, sensuality to it, <laughs> and the 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 handles, the grips are less. They're more like pointed in the DualShock Two and Three, and these feel a little bit more round. Kind of hard to explain, but anyway, I, I I think this is their best controller yet. This new one. Someone said I would agree if my PS5 controller hadn't gotten stick drift. Well, that's what happened to me with the PS4 one. One of them got really bad stick drift. And then the other one got really bad stick drift. Okay, so obviously I didn't get all the collectibles, but I think I'm good. I enjoyed my time with this game. Got two full streams out of it. Well, not exactly full stream, but um, I enjoyed it. This does get you excited for the potential of the PS5. I leave the question to you. Leave a comment. It's been three years since this console has released almost. Has it lived up to that potential so far? Has it been worth the $500 for you, the chat member? I can't answer this question because I just got it and I'm only using it as a Final Fantasy machine for now until maybe another later date. So leave a comment, let me know. Also specifically leave a comment if you don't go for uh, go to war for Sony on message boards on the internet because I know the answer is gonna be automatically yes. I'll tell you that I've enjoyed my time with this game, 
but I'm curious. Let me know what you think. And I'm not going to be able to read the chat. I'll read the comments at a later date. I'm just genuinely curious what you think of the PS5 so far, almost three years in. And, um, you know, I like the Nintendo Switch. I have some issues with it. I have issues with Nintendo as a company. Do you feel the same for Sony? But one thing's for sure, and I'll agree with this, as people have recommended this game and have said this, this was probably one of the best, if not the best, pack-in game I've ever played. So, bonus points for that. 